Giddy up! Welcome back to Adventures with Dirt Pony. Yay! That's Heck us. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to share a mic because that's just the way it is. So there's my beloved dirt pony. It just turned 50,000 miles. That's right. 5-0. Uh, so I bought the bike brand new in 2015, April 24th to be exact. I put the bike on, on uh, I put a deposit on the bike in October of 2014, two days after the Intermont show in Germany unveiled it. And before it was unveiled, I only saw the silhouette, the front silhouette of the bike. And I knew from the shape of the bike that that was absolutely going to be the bike for me. And I'd only been riding at that point since June of 2014. So I'd only been riding, you know, you know, a few months and I was looking for my forever bike. Anyway, put the deposit on it and it took me eight months, eight and a half months later, it finally came in. It's like having, it's like having a baby. You just got to wait. That's right. It has to gestate. <laughs> so the bike came in, I took it home, and the first thing I did to it was get rid of the tall, tall bars because I was like a parachute in the wind. And then from there on, I made lots and lots of um, adjustments to it. I, um, I traded the seat out for the full throttle seat because that was more comfortable, but then I had it recovered to match the color of the icon yellow because I can't stand color clashing. So as you can see behind me, the seat matches the tank and that's been that way since almost the get-go um and i put sporty tires on it and i since i didn't have a sport bike this was my do everything bike not do everything well but it did everything so i had you know road tires and i did sporty things on it i did a lot a lot of off-roading uh, see he's got my notes over here so within a couple of months of getting it i took my very first solo solo motorcycle trip so I'd only been riding at this point like a year. Off I went from Raleigh, North Carolina to Binghamton, New York, through the wilds. Uh, camping along the way, by the no, way. No, not, not that trip, not that trip. Oh. Damn. Sorry, sorry, that was the next year. The first year was uh, bed and breakfast, you know, hoity-toity stuff, but um, it was nice. And I had a lot of adventuring on that trip, learned a lot. As soon as I got back, a friend of mine called and said, hey, Norman Reedus is shooting um, Tale of the Dragon for his, what was the name of that show he had? Uh, Riding with Norman Reedus or <laughs> something, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and they were doing the Tale of the Dragon section. He's like, do you, they want other riders. So do you want to go? I'm like, okay. I literally hadn't even unpacked from my New York trip. Um, and I got back and off I went for my very first Tale of the Dragon experience. That was crazy. A lot, a lot happened on that trip. And I have a blog on my website, ColleenAnnGuest.com. Um, the blog is called That's What She Said. And if you dig down through there, you'll see the Tale of the Dragon uh, in three parts. Because um, a lot of crazy stuff happened on that trip. But anyway, we made it back. We survived. Then, what do we do next? Oh, so the next year. So every summer I go home to New York, right? The next summer is the summer I went camping on the bike solo. Solo trip, solo camping was awesome. And I'm a horseback rider, as we know. Yay, dirt pony. That's why we're, we're, we're the pony. See? He's, even, he's wearing the shirt. Got it right here. Got to have one. Go get one. Yeah, right. Okay, they're not for sale. But... <laughs> <laughs> So I went up to the Brookfield Trail System on my bike and I immediately went on horse trails. And I know better. I know there's signs everywhere saying do not go down, you know, non-motorized vehicles only for horse trails. There's snowmobile trails. Everything is specific to whatever you're riding, whether it's a snowmobile, a horse, a truck, bikes, whatever. So, by the way, I'm going to have some notes to add into this story because it's quite the story. Okay. I, I guess I'll pop in here. If you, right. But but to let you know, these trails were nuts and definitely places that the bike should not have been. Yeah, so here I am. And so I sat at the top of the trail and I looked down this one trail and I thought to myself, God, I'm way up here in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell signal. And the Brookfield trail system is pretty extensive and there was nobody else up there riding. So... I mean, if there are, you hardly ever see anybody because it's so big. If something happens to me, no one's going to know. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going down this trail. And so I went down this trail, and it was literally, it was a horse trail, like like a crick. And I'm having to do things I don't even know how to do. Like I'm dabbing, and I'm 
doing all this stuff. I mean, I'm going down this crazy ass trail and I get to the bottom and I'm like, woohoo, I feel so accomplished. And I'm like, well, crap, I'm gonna have to go back up this thing. I turn around and look up the trail and there's a sign that says, no motorized vehicles beyond this point. So apparently at the top of the trail, I must have missed that sign. So I was like, oh, thank God, I'm not going back up that trail. Um, so then I go on, I have my trip and I have all kinds of fun adventures. And then I go to come down, um, leave to come back to Raleigh, North Carolina. So I'm, I get on the bike, I'm, it's early morning, I cross over into PA, and the very first place I stop, and by the way, Binghamton's right on the border of, of New York and PA, so it's not very far, so like 40 minutes into my trip, or 30 minutes into my trip, I pull over at a gas station, and I'm like, oh, I got no rear brake. Why do I have no rear brake? And I use my rear brake all the time whenever I'm, you know, turning tight and doing stuff. So you can jump in here in a second. I can tell you're dying too, but let me, let me just finish this. So, so, I'm like, well, screw it. I got to keep going. So I rode all the way in one day, one shot, 600 miles with no rear brake all the way back to Raleigh. It was a beautiful day. So I just kept going and I got back and I'm like, I got no rear brake. And so, you know, I've got no brake. Well, I said, let's go check it out. Um, upon further inspection, we saw that the, the, oil filter which is located right on the front of the engine was creased up pretty good and it actually been leaking oil the entire time which then dribbled back down um uh, onto the onto the rear brakes yeah so my whole foot and the whole everything was covered in everything was covered in oil my tire my brakes my everything just covered in oil i'm so lucky i didn't wreck on that trip uh or seize your engine or, yeah, well, it, I didn't lose enough oil to have <laughs> <laughs> engine problems, but it was yeah. enough of it came out where everything was good and coated. So, yeah, I creased that thing like a V on one of those rocks going down that 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 horse trail. What else? What else is on the list? Um, oh, here's something. <laughs> so Ducati lost lost money on uh, this one so far as the warranty and the next story you're getting ready to hear. Yeah, well, it's not really a story as much as a collection of, um, I bought, when I bought the bike, because it was a first gen new motorcycle, I'm like, I'm getting the extended warranty, which was five years, unlimited miles. And they fix anything that's wrong with it other than, you know, tires and normal wear and tear. Well, you bet your, mm, that I did not put normal wear and tear on this bike at Around every turn, this thing was back in and it had warranty stuff replaced, 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 till pretty soon the whole bike has been systematically replaced under warranty. And every time I know there's people in, in Italy that were just dreading getting a call from my dealership because everything was warranty. Right up until like the last two weeks before it came off warranty, I was still doing warranty stuff to this thing. Um, however, it was not uh, due to issues in regards to how well things were made. She was riding the hell out of this bike. I mean, she was really asking a lot <laughs> of this bike, engine-wise and, and everything else. Yeah, performance-wise. You know, I saw the commercials. Y'all saw the commercials, right? You know, Land of Joy. This thing is supposed to be jumping. <laughs> it's supposed to be doing all this crazy stuff. I was doing all that stuff. So uh, early on, she found out, uh, you know, where power is made within the power band, and then she just kept it there. <laughs> I discovered Ducati. My, my very first bike was a TU250, and I went from that straight to this bike. And when somebody taught me that, um, you know, when you get up in the power band, the high RPMs, that's where it really likes to um, stick to the road. She and, didn't come back. Yeah, I didn't come back. It was close to redline like all the time. So it turns out I'm so stupid. I didn't know that you're not supposed to just like always ride it up in the power band because it's so much fun. Yeah. So I, there was a lot of things. Um, I also busted the headlight inside the headlight. There's the little shroud for the, um, to keep the light focused or something. I don't know what the hell it is. One time when I was up in New York, I was bombing through the mountains up near um, Howe's Cave and, and Secret Cavern. And there's the, I think it's Howe's Cave Road, or it might have been the Secret Cavern Road, whichever one. I, anyway, I was flying up this hill. I'm like, this is awesome. And I'm going like a lot faster than you should be. And all of a sudden there's a railroad track, right? And here, hold, hold this mic for me. 
So, so this railroad track, I'm coming up the hill and the railroad track is flat in the middle of the hill and then the hill continues on up past it. So from my angle, it just looks like the road goes like this. But no, it goes up, flat for the track, and then immediately right back up. So as I'm coming up to the, the tracks, I'm like, I see what's going on and what's about to happen. And I'm about to just nose straight into the other side of the hill. So I just gassed it. I'm like, well, I'm already going super fast. There's no slowing this thing down. So I might as well go faster. <laughs> so I just, wah, just ripped right on that throttle. And I jumped those tracks like Dukes of Hazards going over the um the water and it the thing sail i mean we were sailing through the air and i came down on the other side and i hit so hard on the front end that it busted the shroud off the headlight inside <laughs> which leads me to um to another uh to to add to that i can't tell you how many times um i've seen daylight under her rear tire following her across railroad tracks oh my god railroad tracks were made for jumping am i right like this is and this bike was made for jumping unfortunately the suspension was not made for jumping all right what's what's on the next what we got sir? what do we got here um all right here's some stuff i gotta I actually gotta look at this because i wrote down notes because we've cool done so much places this bike, um man. so i've been through uh, horse trails and, and not just that one like a lot um, sand. I went to Busco Beach with it. My son talked me into taking the bike to Busco Beach. It's nothing but sand jumps and whoops, and it's all for dirt bikes. And I was wondering why I had so many crazy looks. And I'm like, what? It's a dual sport bike. Yeah, it's not really. It just markets itself as one. So I'm out there, and it's nothing but sand. I stayed upright. I didn't crash it, but it's a heavy bike to be getting through sand sand water crossings we did our first water crossings last year i did my first three on flooded roads i mean up to my knees practically flooded roads i shouldn't have ridden through on a motorcycle but it was a flash flooding and it was crazy so i did that first on pavement and then a few months later we did it oh, yeah. we did it in the mountains and sure. that was real water crossings with that was fun um rocks mountain passes we did all kinds of stuff oh, okay a couple years ago well between here and binghamton is gettysburg and a lot of civil war history so i like to go through all those places um as a kid i we used to go to visit gettysburg a lot so a couple years ago speed goat and i uh stayed in gettysburg for a few days it's awesome it's great it was. Tell them what we did. Tell them where we took the bikes. Well, one of the uh, one of the cool things that we did was uh, we we checked out um, the location of Pickett's Charge uh, the day before, but it was pretty crowded. We got up early the next day and went back, and no one was out there, and and uh, got to park pretty close to it and take some really cool photos. And it was uh, very sobering to stand there uh, right at the side of Pickett's Charge. Um, yeah. Alone. Yeah. No line, but. Yeah. So we stood, we put our bikes, we parked them right on the spot where they've marked that uh, General Lee stood and, and um, ordered his troops from looking straight across Pickett's Charge towards the Union side. So we were on the Confederate side, it was cool. standing in the shadow of where General Lee stood with, um, what the heck was his horse name? I can't think of it right now. Traveler. Traveler! Oh my gosh. So anyway, Dirt Pony and Speed Go stood where Traveler stood. Um, tornado warnings. Oh yeah, we've been through flooding. tornado warnings, <laughs> flash floods, torrential rain. Well, certainly camping. I already talked about that. We've done a lot of camping. It was the star of a video production here yeah. recently. My hand's getting shaky. Look at that. I can't We're hardly, there. I can't hardly there. hold this st steady anymore. We're almost there. Um, so we did a complete makeover. I'll, take, I'll give you another walk around the bike real real fast um when we hit forty thousand miles on this bike i had to do a <laughs> we were up in the blue ridge parkway and we had to do um just we found the perfect spot to take the video take a picture but i wasn't quite there yet yeah, i was like so, i was like a mile shy or something so i just did this loop around this thing for as as our buddy keith and myself waited as she did loops around the parking lot to yeah. finish up the last mile yes. oh yeah yes. so thank you for sticking around for um, some adventures with Dirt Pony, there's going to be lots more. Please go check out um, the rest of my videos that I have up on my channel. Those show you a lot of stuff that's happened in the last couple of years because it's only been the last couple of years that I've 
I've gotten cameras and done that. On my blog, that's what she said on my website, ColleenAnnGuest.com, you will see more adventures um, in my blog format before I got, you know, I was just taking pictures and doing a blog, which was fun. I like that. Um, not to mention the video that's got a full rundown of all the all the um, upgrades that have been done, like some pretty significant hardcore upgrades that have been excellent. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're going to just do another quick walk around of the bike for those of you who haven't seen it. But you Let's have a looky-loo one more time. Just recently, I upgraded the tires to the Scorpion rallies. So far, so good. I have yet to get them in dirt. What else have I done here? Let's start at the back. Um, I did a tidy tail on the bike, added this rack, which they don't make anymore by DM to lie. This, this was an early on, this is the full throttle seat. And like I said, I had it <laughs> recovered just to match. So the colors matched. I couldn't stand the orangey yellow and the normal yellow. Um, one of the early things I did was put on this GP Extreme exhaust by Dan Moto. I have put on Adventure foot pegs. Uh, I had to swap out the swing arm when I did the when I did the um, suspension because the original spring was like rust welded to it. It was crazy. I don't think I did anything else with the wheels. Um, this is just the heat shield from my Moscow moto luggage, which I love, by the way. Um, what else have I done over here? We added the crash bars by SW Motec. Have yet to, you know, ex do anything that need those, but I'm glad they're there. I finally got my dirt pony decals. Yay! Oh, we had this powder coated and painted black early on and, and removed the badges. And I used to have the Millennium Falcon on here. That's how the bike was originally named. It was originally named the Falcon because as I was downshift through the gears, it sounded like the Millennium Falcon jumping to, or not making the jump to hyperspace. So I'm like, oh my God, the bike's the Falcon, whether I like it or not. That's why it used to be the Falcon. But since I've done so much off-roading, it has earned the moniker Dirt Pony. So that's where we are. I have added, let's see, Bark Busters Storm, which I love. What else did I do over here? Anything? Um, of course, I added the full throttle bars, which means I had to get a whole new clamp here. Put on heated grips. Love those. I went back to stock mirrors. I used to have the bar ends, but the stock mirrors work so much better for, for touring. Gosh, and then here we go. We've got these beautiful Olin's custom forks for me, fully adjustable. They came in from Andriani in Italy. Um, custom for my my height and weight. Always keep RNG sliders on. I used to have RNG frame sliders on here until I just got these bars, but that's the other thing I forgot to show you. I've got the RNG spools on the back, which those have come in handy multiple times for many reasons. Got the Evotech guard here. Got two different dart fly screens. I've got a darker one, the Piranha, which is a little skinnier doesn't really do much. I, I just like the way the darker one looks. This one actually does protect from the wind a little better. Oh, let's see. Oh, I've got years ago, I changed out my levers to uh, adjustable levers, which I absolutely love. Of course, I think we've already seen. We got a little dirt pony up there. What else do we have down this side? Oh, these forks are just stunning and not only are they stunning they are they're just amazing i can't i cannot recommend enough to you get your suspension upgraded even if you just swap out the the fork oil get different springs do something you don't have to go as as uh nuts as i did with a full fork swap out but you got to do something the stock suspension on these bikes are terrible i added a helmet hook here um i got a wider kickstand foot um oh i did do the evotech guards up in here as well and i got the evotech skid plate and if we can see it i should have had that when i was in new york and then of course we have 
the adjustable Owens rear shock as well. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else that's been done to the bike. I have never done a bit of tuning on it. No mapping. It just always runs great, even with the slip-on exhaust change. So, so there it is. Want to thank you for being here for Adventures with Dirt Pony, and we're gonna we're gonna have a lot more together. Absolutely, Dirt Pony and Speed Goat. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, and enjoy the photo montage that's about to follow now.